What's up, everybody? Sunday Sessions, episode 37. Super excited to be here with y'all. The purpose of these calls is to deliver information to help you build your wholesale businesses, Amazon businesses, private label, e-commerce businesses, whatever type of business you're building to sell products to the end consumer. We're here to help you figure out solutions to your problem. So my name is Eric Castellano. I'm the owner and founder of Amazon Lit. I've been in the game for about a decade. I ship about 3 million orders a year. And the goal is to deliver tons of insights. So let's get right into it. Any questions you have, please ask away. More than grateful to answer any questions. Uh, just saw it online. Vegas ASD, is there events you recommend to go to? My first time going and learning about wholesale. FBA John, absolutely. So in our link in our Instagram bio right here, the first option, BGHL, it's happened on 227, uh, which is a Monday evening between you know 5 and 11 p.m. Uh, that is the event you want to be at, 100%. You want to be at that event. Also, FBA, John, if you're in the Sellers Rye, all the information about ES, ASD and all the events we're hosting and all the events that are available are pinned at the top of the Facebook group. Um, so we have a walkthrough on Sunday. We have BGHL on Monday evening. And then we have a private inner circle event on Wednesday or on Tuesday, rather. Uh, best place to buy boxes, local, local, local. Don't go to don't go to uh, Home Depot and spend whatever they're charging a box, two fifty or three dollars or whatever it is now. Um, obviously, everything's went up in price over the years, but um, we always encourage shop local distributors uh, because they'll have the most competitive rates. You could also, if you wanted to buy in bulk, you could get even further discounts if you have a place to store the inventory. Um, but every time, local is going to beat out Uline, local is going to beat out Target, local is going to beat out Home Depot, local is going to beat out Lowe's. You're going to be able to save, you know, 10 to 15 percent per box, if not more, especially if you're buying them from Lowe's and stuff right now. Yo, bro, I was thinking again a warehouse soon. Any tips what I should be looking for? We'll start small. So, Oscar, yeah, man. So, LoopNet is a great website to do warehouse shopping. You definitely want to check out LoopNet. Um, you know, because you're smaller, you're going to want a space you can grow into. So, um, I'm not sure what your current revenue is, but let's just say. Uh, you'd start with like a thousand to two thousand square foot warehouse. Now you want to be mindful of the lease you're signing, right? Because a five-year lease in a two thousand square foot warehouse doesn't really support uh, growth. So if you could get locked in at a three-year, which is really the lowest that I see being offered, depending on where you are in the country, sometimes they'll give a year to year. Uh, but if you get locked in a three-year, you'd want to communicate with your broker. Um, and then the person leasing you the property, you want to communicate with them to make sure that they have other properties available that you could move into if you were to break this lease or that they allow a sublease option so you can essentially move to a new location and sublease your property out to a tenant. That would be the move. Um, second thing, you want to ask what their CAM fees are. So a CAM fee is all the additional fees associated with the building. Um, it could be for snow removal. It could be for flowers in the summertime, mulch, cutting the grass, daily maintenance. Uh, let's say they, they need to repave the driveway. So those CAM fees are an additional fee to your square footage um, fee that they add. You know, I've seen CAM fees anywhere from 50 cents to $3 for a CAM fee. I know we pay right around $2.25 for our CAM fee. So it bumps up our rent. Um, $2.25 per square foot, but most buildings will have a camp fee. Uh, the second thing you want to capitalize, Oscar, if you're looking for small, right, That then what restricts you for small is horizontal space. So you want to get something with high ceilings so you can capitalize on vertical space. The same way if you go to Tokyo or, you know, some of these big cities in Asia, they're very compact. The only way to go up is, or the only way to build is up. Same thing in your warehouse. When you're small, the only way to go is up. So I would encourage you to get, you know, 25 foot ceilings. Also, you want to have an elevated bay door. Elevated bay door, um, let's just say you're getting one shipment a week. 
for that's too low. Let's say you're getting three shipments a week. Average cost of a lift gate is about 60 bucks. It's $180 a week times four weeks. You know, you're looking at over $700 in monthly lift gate service fees. So getting an elevated bay door will instantly save on your rent because instead of giving a carrier 700 bucks a month, you're putting that money back into your pocket. Hello, I'm an Amazon seller, FBA Italy. I respect you a lot. I would like to ask, what did you think about the Italian market? I currently have 100 products and I have a turnover of 250, 2,500 USD a day. That's great. And 50% margins. Um, yeah, that's amazing, man. Listen, I always encourage whatever country you live in, if there's Amazon, it's easiest to start there. So I love that you live in Italy and you started selling in Italy first because it's going to teach you a lot about the game. It's going to teach you a lot about the do's and the don'ts of, of growing an Amazon business. So continue to do what you're doing. It seems like it's obviously working. You're doing $2,500 days at 50% margins. Now, whether that's gross or net, doesn't really matter at that point because let's say net is 20%. Those are still massive margins on $2,500 a day. That's $500 a day in profits. Like that's amazing. So keep doing what you're doing, my uh, GF consulting. Uh, you recommend Channel Max. I've never used it, but I know a lot of people in our community use it. Um, when is the right moment to get a warehouse? Uh, when you're running out of space in your current location, right? When you got to jump over boxes and move two pallets to get to the third pallet and you got to put those two pallets over there and then pull the third pallet out and put the other two back and then move. And you're like, just move, you're spending 20% of your day just moving stuff, whether you're in your storage unit or in your garage or your basement or your small warehouse, whenever you start having to jump over boxes, that's when you need a new place, right? Because you're too you're too full right now. And it's going to be different for everybody. But you know better than anybody else how efficient your process is. And if you're losing 20% of your production daily to just movement, then your business is inefficient. It's time to get a space. What's the biggest challenges during the first year running your business? Um, so one of the biggest challenges will be just finding those profitable SKUs that are going to move. You know, it's the reason why most people quit. It's because initially they're looking for to make X amount of money. And when they don't see those results, they get discouraged and they give up. You know, but also one thing I've learned in the past decade of doing this is the ones that do not give up, the ones who are persistent and consistent, those are the ones who see massive success. Those are the ones who you know, join our community and contact me in 18 months. And they say, Eric, I'm doing, you know, $600,000 a month. Or Eric, I'm doing, I just hit my first million dollar a month. Like those are the companies that prevail. So I think opening up wholesale accounts, finding suppliers is initially one of the hardest parts and it's where most people quit, which is cool. Um, I think it's great. It's it's literally the, the barrier of entry that makes Amazon Wholesale not for everybody. Do we sellers get reimbursed for orders not received or shipping addressed undeliverable or we do we file a claim? If we file a claim, where would this be? I have no idea, man. Um, I would imagine. Well, if it's FBM, you would have to deal with the customer communication. If it's FBA, Amazon would deal with the customer communication, but I'm not sure who gets reimbursed. Uh, do you have suppliers and wholesalers from Europe? Is there a limitation to buy branded products out of the U.S.? Uh, so some will have restrictions um, if you're bringing them into the U.S., whether it's FDA guidelines or certain products restrictions. We personally do not buy from any wholesalers or suppliers in Europe, only because the cost of shipping to get it to the U.S. would be crazy expensive. Uh, but I do know some people um, in our community who they do buy a lot from they specialize in like importing um, European food items to the United States and selling them on Amazon. Is everybody having fun? Let me know if you're having fun. Listen, give me a give me a, a fire emoji if you're enjoying yourselves, and give me a turd emoji if you think it's trash. Once you get to your level, who motivates you at this point or helping other kind of puts the future under your every day? Definitely at this level, um, we need, I needed to revamp my entire motivation. So um, something I did was I joined a high level inner circle. You know, for me, it was 
uh, Russell Brunson's inner circle. And what that did was surround me with people who are much further advanced than I am. You know, people who are operating uh, bigger businesses, different business models. It introduced me to a completely new mindset. Um, and from that, I learned that in the Amazon wholesale space, nothing really exists for for sellers trying to scale out other than e-sellers or I, which is amazing. Don't get me wrong, you know, but at, at, an, at a high seven figure and eight figure level, there's a disconnect there for great information. Uh, but we have all that information. So then um, I get a lot of my motivation from my own inner circle, right, because my own inner circle um, I'm able to harvest an atmosphere of some of the largest wholesale companies in the world and leverage tons of information and insight from them as well as teach them. And anytime I teach something, something, someone, something, it makes me more of an expert in that field. Right. So like repeating this over and over and over again, doing these Sunday sessions, you know, this is Sunday session number 36. Every Monday night in my Eat Sellers or I community, I've been doing a live call for almost three years straight. Right. That's a long time to be talking about this information. So just reinforcing those ideas. Also, um, I like reading good books, too. What's the highest BSR we go on? Depending on the volume per sales per month, what's the max sellers you go on? Um, so it's definitely category specific, uh, but I'll go all the way up to 300,000 on BSR, you know, especially if I could be making, you know, 10, $15 at 300,000. Cause then what that tells me is this product's overpriced. Instead of making $15 in profit, I'm going to make $6 in profit. I'm going to drop the listed price by $9, make it more customer friendly, give me more opportunity to win the buy box. Um, usually we do not buy products that sell less than 12 items a month that we will sell less than 12, 12 items a month for. Um, it's just something we don't do. It's very time consuming to be able to, uh, process those items. You know, if you pick up a hundred SKUs and you're only packing four or six of each of them, it's very time consuming process to do that. Yeah. So I see a lot of beginner, uh, you know, I, Hey, I'm a beginner or for a beginner. So if you go to my Instagram bio, we have a 22 video, absolutely free playlist on YouTube um, that will teach you a lot about wholesale for beginners, right? It's, it's pulled from our e-sellers or I program. So it's maybe five or 8% of the videos that are included in the full program. But what it will do is it will help you find some suppliers, it'll help you ship your products, it'll help you do product research. It'll kind of put all the pieces of the puzzle together. So if you're brand new and, and, and what I'm talking about sounds like a completely foreign language, pop into that absolutely free training. It will maybe take you an hour and a half to watch the whole thing. Um, you watch at your own time. You can change the language so it has subtitles in different languages and just learn from that. It will really set you up for success. And then you can reach out and join me. I would like to ask you how you manage to scale up your business and have continuous cash flow that allow you to get to where you are today. So we leveraged initially what was huge for us was credit cards. We leveraged a ton of credit. Um, and then after that, we started leveraging Amazon lending. Um, so as far as credit cards, Amex Plum, Chase Inc, Capital One, these are all great credit cards. I suggest having two to four of them for your business to leverage credit. Um, and then we started leveraging Amazon lending. They started off with maybe a hundred thousand dollar loan. You know, at the time it was maybe seven or eight percent interest. Um, we took that loan, then they gave us a couple hundred thousand dollar loan, then they gave us a six hundred thousand dollar loan, then an eight hundred. And by year three, three and a half of our Amazon journey, Amazon was lending us a million dollars three times a year, right? Which we were able to dump into inventory. And even at, you know, the seven or eight percent interest rates they charged us, you know, we really leveraged it to build not only our business, but also the relationships with our vendors. Because now we were able to go from, you know, spending $100,000, $150,000 a month with some of our vendors to spending $300,000, $400,000 a month with some of our vendors. That instantly bumped us up to a whole new discount here, right? A whole new product opportunity. It really allowed us to scale out your operation. And this is just our journey, right? And these are these are the methods that you can use. Business credit, 
um, lending. You could also use private investors. You just want to be mindful if you're giving up equity in your company, especially if they're only investing money. I only like to give really equity to someone who's also going to um, you know, put some work in. That's just my personal preference um, because I feel like there's better alternatives to getting funding than just having a private investor, you know, take 50% of your business to dump a couple hundred thousand dollars in cash into it. Um, and then the last thing you can do is bank loans. You know, you can get an SBA loan. Just keep in mind if it's an SBA loan, you're going to have to put up some collateral, whether it's, uh, you know, a home or a, a vacation property or a, a rental property or a a boat, whatever you got, something, an asset that you could put up as collateral for your SBA loan. Um, have you ever sold Nikes and Adidas? Yeah. So I actually worked for many years with a company um, who had direct relationships with Under Armour, Nike, Adidas. You know, we placed maybe a half million dollars in purchase orders with them over the course of about a year. And at the end of the year, when we reviewed the profits versus all the data that we had, you know, how many items were sold, what the profit per item was, uh, what the return rate was, we ended up breaking even on about $500,000 in Nikes, Adidas, and Under Armour sales, right? And the reason why is because the return rates were right around 16, 70%. I mean, 16, 17%, not 70, 60, 70, 16, 17% return rates. So when we analyzed our, our numbers, it just didn't make logical sense for us to continue to sell in those categories. And that's just a personal preference, neither right nor wrong. It's just something we no longer do. As a reseller, I made seven figures. 2 million revenue as a reseller, six years consecutive with 10 employees at its peak. Nice, Jan. Jan, you're you're like a perfect fit for Inner Circle. You know, Inner Circle, we work with seven and eight figure business owners more directly to help them grow sales. It's a 12 month membership. Um, you get exclusive direct access to me and Sebastian, access to the other inner circle, live events, private calls. It's like next level. It's for anybody who's already operating a seven and eight figure business trying to elevate and, you know, three to five X their sales in the next 12 months. And when I say three to five extra sales, please, I'm always talking at the at the forefront of any sales conversation I have is profits and most importantly, net profit dollars. You know, I hear all the time people talking about, hey, my margin went down and yeah, but maybe your margin went down two points, but you doubled the amount of items you sold, you know, so your net profit dollars nearly doubled, but you're so focused on profit percentage margins that you didn't even realize your net profit dollars doubled because you saw that your company went from 20% last year to 17% this year, you know, but you're failing to realize the influx in orders, you actually made double the amount of profit dollars, which is massive. Gwen said, Eric and Sebastian are masters. Listen to them. I have never known them to steer anyone wrong. Thanks, Gwen. Appreciate you. Yeah. So, any tip to find a local distributor in Google Grocery Personal or Grocery Personal Care or Beauty? Yeah. So, you want to take whatever city you're in. Let's say you're in Tampa, and you would search, you know, Grocery Distributors Tampa, Grocery Wholesalers Tampa, Grocery Suppliers Tampa, um, Personal Care Suppliers Tampa, Personal Distributors Tampa. Right? And you just scale out. Um, your keyword research like that. Also, something we like to do, we call it freestyling. I'll Google a local industrial area to me. I'll put a pocket full of 20 business cards and I'll literally park my car and I'll walk around that industrial area and just start knocking on doors. Um, I found a lot of really great companies local to me like that. And actually the, the Adidas, Nike and Under Armour company I was just talking about, I found them I'm doing freestyling, just walking up to doors in industrial areas in my area. So obviously the relationship didn't work out, you know, but I'm sure for somebody that relationship's a great relationship because they, uh, you know, maybe have a little more control on their return rates. But for me, it just wasn't profitable. But there's other great relationships I built uh, locally to me as well, just by Google and local industrial areas, especially if you know the area, you'll know where the industrial areas are to go.
Shark of Miami said, do you recommend buying from other Amazon sellers? I do not, unless their invoices, unless they can confirm their invoices work for approval, which most Amazon sellers, they do not. Right? And I just, someone just messaged me a couple of days ago. They did something very similar, Sharks of Miami. So I guess they met someone on Instagram. They sold them Dyson uh, vacuums. And, you know, they purchased $40,000 worth of Dyson vacuum from this seller. They get them into Amazon. They sell half their inventory. Amazon shuts down the listing and is requiring an invoice in order to get it reinstated. But because they bought it from a nobody Amazon seller who doesn't own a legitimate wholesale company and whose invoices do not work for approval, uh, they ended up having to actually pull back all that inventory because they could not get the listing reinstated. Right. So it's a rookie mistake. It's common for newer sellers to make those mistakes. Uh, but having a quick conversation with anybody you're purchasing inventory from and just just asking the simple question, um, hey, do your invoices work if I have any account health issues, right? And if they say, oh, sometimes or once in a while they do, then you got to be weary, right? Because I know if someone asked me that for my wholesale company, yes, every single time. Yes, they work. Yes, e-sellers right is considered a business uh, write-off. And if you want to know the tax code for that, just send me a DM. I'll send it over for you. So after you purchase, you can share the exact tax code. And I believe it's even on the checkout page. The e-sellers ride tells you the tax code. Um, it's an investment in your company, furthering your education. So really, the way I like to like at it, like to look at it, sixty-six percent. You're only paying for it. So yeah, it's a three thousand dollar program, but really, it's only going to cost you two thousand because you're not going to have to pay the the um, taxes on the $3,000 purchase, which essentially saves you a thousand bucks. Everybody having fun or what? Uh, the inner circle. So it's it costs more than a minivan and less than a rental property in the middle of Ohio, right? And if you want to jump on a phone call, just send me a DM on uh, Instagram. And we could get you set up and jump on a 45 minute phone call, all right? And it's less about price. If you're worried about the price, you're asking the wrong questions. It's about the value. But I understand. I would want to know the price as well. What is your check-in time from the time it's picked up from you to check into Amazon? I need to speed that up. So, Caleb, ours is right around anywhere from an hour to 24 hours. Um, and the way we get that it is, A, we have our own carrier. So, essentially, the other carrier option, not leveraging Amazon partnered. And, B, we use 2D uh, box content labels, which lets Amazon know what's inside the box and they don't have to open it when it gets shipped to their facility. So normally what happens at an Amazon warehouse and they offer tours of their warehouses as well. I think if you just search warehouse tours, you go on a free tour of your local facility. Uh, but what happens when a box is shipped to an Amazon warehouse, they open that box and they scan each individual FN SKU. But when you use 2D box content information, they no longer have to open that box. They scan the 2D information and that box continues down the conveyor belt to its final destination without having to open it and slow down the process of your inventory being received. Um, Ree said he's contacted unit shippers. They said they only accept customers who are consistent with shipments. So tell them you're going to be consistent with shipments. Uh, yeah, we help people in Europe. We help people all over the world. So my community has about 800 people in it. I would say 60 to 70 of them are international students and probably 40 of them are selling in the Europe, European market. So our program is universal. Uh, what are the cons of living next to an Amazon fulfillment center? The con is you pro it's probably not where your Amazon <laughs> inventory is gonna get shipped to. So, you know, even though you got one right next to you, um, they're probably not going to prioritize your shipments to that facility. So it could be stressful, but it's also not the end of the world. world. What do you think about trade shows in the New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania area? So oh, we got the Fancy Food Show, which is hosted at Jacob Javits Center in Manhattan. You got the New York Toy Fair, which is hosted at, hosted at the Jacob Javits Center in Manhattan. You got Expo East, which is hosted in Philadelphia. That's just three to name a few. Um, so here's a great question from um, Ahmed. He said over on YouTube, almost all of the brands are not willing to take board Amazon sellers. What should we do in this situation? So you never want to, if a company says, hey, we're not taking on any more Amazon sellers, you never just want to hang up the phone call. You got to do your recon. You got to figure out why. Ask the right questions. Okay, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing the information. Can you please elaborate on why you're no longer accepting Amazon clients? Is it because you've had a poor experience in the past? 
Are you currently working with a few third party sellers? Do they manage the products themselves? Now, most of this information you could pull from looking at their listings, right? So that's when the value comes in, right? How are you going to separate yourself from the crowd? How are you going to differentiate yourself? Anybody can place an order with a company. Right. But are you willing to invest a little money in advertising? Are you willing to take on some SKUs that don't have the best margins? Are you willing to build out the relationship? Also, a no today does not mean a no next month. It does not mean a no 90 days from now. It does not mean no in six months. Some of the best accounts that I've closed have taken me multiple months, some of them even years, to finally solidify the deal. Example, I was just talking about that huge removal order we placed the other day. That account took me almost two years to close. And last year we did almost $2 million in sales revenue at 22% profit margins with that account. But it took me two years to get it. I didn't give up, I didn't quit. I was persistent. Every trade show, I'd see him. Hey, B, it's E, what's going on? Stop it by, you guys ready to partner up yet? Ah, not really, not ready yet. Okay, two months later, next trade show. Hey B, it's E, stop it by again. So you had a booth, wanted to say, what's up? Are you guys ready to partner up yet? Ah, E, we're not really ready yet. I did that seven or eight times over the course of 18 months all over the country until I finally closed the deal. All right, everybody, this has been amazing. Just to recap, so ASD is happening February 26th to March 1st. It's, you know, 45 days away. It's free to register, asdonline.com, book your airfare. We're all staying at Resorts World Hilton. Um, so there'll be a couple hundred Amazon sellers there networking, hanging out, gambling, going out to eat, drinking, food, partying, and enjoying life. Um, also, at, don't forget to get your BGHL tickets. The link is in our bio. Um, we're about 65% sold out. Once the event is sold out, there's no extra tickets. You cannot send me a message. I will not be able to get you in the door. There's a limit to space, right? And once that space is filled, there's no more opportunity. So you don't want to wait to the last minute to get your BGHL ticket um, because if you do, they will be gone. Right? And we want you to be there. Also, um, eSellers RI 2.0, a couple months out, working on it. Super excited to continue to provide the most um, up-to-date and accurate information in the Amazon space. If you're not in the community already, send me a DM. I'd love to get you set up inside um, because we're really scaling it out this year and providing as much insights um, to all of you so all of you can scale your operations, right? The goal is for me to help you grow your business so quickly and efficiently um, that you begin to crush, you know, seven, eight-figure years and then joining the inner circle is a no-brainer for you. Right, because at that level, I can provide even more insight to help you grow. So it's our our uh, value ladder. And most people enter any seller's ride. But um, I appreciate all of you. Have a beautiful rest of your day. If you got any follow-ups, hit me in the DMs on Instagram. And uh, yeah, enjoy your weekend. Stay lit, everybody.